It was perhaps the hardest decision of her life. Should she have honored her duty to her father, or should she have saved the life of the turtles, who have always conducted themselves with honor? This is the story of Oroku Karai from the 4Kids 2003 cartoon. Karai was originally created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird in 1993 and then adapted to the 2003 show by Eric Luke in 2004. In this version, Karai was an orphan who was abandoned by her parents at a young age. One day in Japan, Sherelle found her and decided to adopt and train her. Over the years, Karai became the one human he could trust the most. But while he revealed his alien nature to her, the reasons for his exile on Earth were somewhat exaggerated. Sherelle told her that the Utrams have been wrongfully hunting him for centuries. Eventually, Shredder moved to New York and Karai stayed in Japan, in charge of the Japanese branch of the Foot Clan. While Shredder stayed in New York, he unknowingly set things in motion that would lead to his failure to get revenge at the Utrams. After failing and being considered dead by his allies and enemies, a turf war began in Manhattan all of a sudden. Without fear of the Shredder, the Foot Clan, the Purple Dragons, and the Mafia, now assisted by Baxter Stockman, started fighting each other to get each other's territory. But it was the chaotic situation of the now leaderless Foot Clan that forced Kar-I into coming to New York. Once there, she met with the Turtles and offered them a deal. She would convince the Foot to stop hunting them and their father, in exchange of helping her regain control of the city. After all, it was because of the Turtles' actions that a war started, resulting in the death of innocent people. The Turtles agreed to a truce and helped Kar-I fight against the Dragons, the Mafia, and some rogue elites. With the clan under control and the other factions fearing Kar-I, the cycle of vengeance between the Foot and the Turtles was finally stopped by the honorable word of Kar-I. But Shirell wasn't really dead. He was recovering with the help of Biocytes, and when he was finally healed, he decided to send a robotic duplicate of Splinter to eliminate the Turtles. Kar-I objected to this, because she gave her word to the Turtles and this would not have been honorable, but Sherell justified this by telling her that her honor was in doing his duties. While Karai accepted this, it was clear that she wasn't on the same page with her father when it came to honor. As a result, she would sometimes help the Turtles escape or survive the constant attacks of the Foot Clan. After the Triceraton invasion, Sherell needed to find as much alien technology as possible to finally create a starship that could help him escape Earth and go back to the Utram homeworld with an army to exact his revenge. To help him create that starship, Sherell hired Dr. Chaplin, an engineering genius that resembled the Baxter Stockman of the 1987 cartoon. A subtle romance would start between Chaplin and Kar-I throughout the years. Ideally, Sherell's plan was to leave Earth with an army and let Kar-I take charge of the Foot Clan in his absence until his triumphant return. But there were moments when Kar-I disagreed too much with her father and needed to collaborate with the Turtles to at least change the path of the Shredder's plans to have more ethical results. Such a plan was the recovering of an anti-gravity generator that was keeping the city of Beijing in the air, something that happened during the Triceraton invasion. Shredder's plan was only about the recovering of that generator and would have led to the city of Beijing plummeting to its destruction, killing billions. Korai could not see any honor in these actions and conspired with the Turtles and the Fugitoid to put the city back where it belonged while still recovering the generator. The mission ended up being a success for the Turtles even if they put the city facing the wrong side. The relationship between the Turtles and Kar-I remained friendly. While they continued to be on opposite sides of the fight, they respected the code of honor of each other. But all of this changed when Orokusaki's plan to escape Earth was finally ready to be executed. The night Shredder was meant to leave Earth, he organized a farewell party with the High Society of New York, leaving his empire in the hands of Kar-I. This would have been great for the Turtles as well, as Kar-I would have simply reinstated the truce with them. But of course, letting Shirelle escape Earth and conquer the Utrum homeworld would have gone against Master Yoshi's mission. The main reason why he died was to protect the Utrums from Shirelle. The Turtles then decided to prevent Shirelle from escaping, and they weren't the only ones. Agent Bishop was also aware of Orokusaki's collection of alien technology, and he wanted those back. But then, Bishop realized Saki had a starship and wanted it for himself. The interruptions from the Turtles and the EPF forced Shirelle to accelerate his plans. 
Korai sided with her father as he was finally going to leave Earth. From her point of view, the Utroms were the villains of the story, so she felt very much justified in her actions. And with the Turtles trying to protect the Utroms, all of a sudden, there was no honor in siding with them. Korai had to help her father get into the starship, along with Dr. Chaplin. The Turtles, Splinter and a handheld version of the Fugitoid got inside the ship just in time for its launch. Once inside, the Turtles were defeated by Korai and Shredder. This was the moment Leonardo got stabbed by Korai, chipping off a part of his show. After escaping the attacks of the EPF, Chaplin, Korai, and Shirelle were now ready to conquer the universe. Even if they didn't have an army, they could easily get mercenaries on their way. Seeing how they ran out of options, Leonardo saw no other way but to blow up the ship by its power source. With initial reluctance, they agreed on their suicide mission to save millions of lives in the universe. At the moment of the explosion, they were rescued by the Utroms, who put them all to safety. The Utroms judged Shirell and sentenced him to be exiled to the ice asteroid of Morgal Tal. Kar-Ai and Chaplin were set to be delivered to Earth authorities, but even if that happened, it didn't really work. Kar-Ai would take over the Foot Clan after all, but she now saw the Turtles as having no honor as they sided with the Utroms who finally sentenced Chirel to a horrible exile. Of course, she also witnessed the charges against him, which included genocide. This didn't bother her that much. She probably didn't think the charges were true. Korai also took the mantle of the Shredder, and after finally finding the location of the sewer lair, she took the whole Foot Clan there and destroyed the place, forcing Splinter, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Clunk to escape. They would all seemingly die in this escape, along with iconic staples of the show, like the Shell Cruiser, the Shell Sub, and the Turtle Tunneler. But there was one missing turtle still to be eliminated. Leonardo was in a pilgrimage with the Ancient One, as he couldn't recover from the psychological trauma of almost leading his clan to suicide. Leonardo returned to the city, found his family members still alive, and led them to a new lair. He then fought against Karai and bested her in combat. This only made Karai hate Leonardo even more. But Karai's role in the Foot Clan was unstable. The Foot Mystics have been against the Imposter Shredders all along. That is, Shirelle and Karai, as they served the one true Shredder, the Tengu Shredder. But because Karai was in possession of the relic known as the Heart of Tengu, she was able to control them. The Mystics decided they had enough and they fooled Bishop into getting his hands on the relic and destroying it. Bishop sent the Turtles, in exchange of helping Donatello return to normal. You can learn more about Agent Bishop in this other video. When the Turtles invaded the clan's headquarters, they had no other option but to fight against Kar-Ai. They succeeded, defeating her once again. Little did they know, this was a fight they should have lost. The Turtles would later be trained by the Acolytes of the Ninja Tribunal, to prepare for the second coming of the Tengu Shredder. The Foot Mystics brought the Tengu Shredder back to life and started creating an army of undead, transforming Manhattan. They eventually fought against Kar-Ai and the Foot Clan, but the Turtles intervened to help Kar-Ai from being killed. Tengu Shredder defeated Kar-Ai in battle, and she then agreed to join the Turtles into recruiting all the help they could get. With the help of Kar-Ai, they recruited the Purple Dragons, the EPF, and the Justice Force. All of them designed a plan that relied on separating the Tengu Shredder from his helmet and gauntlet to make him vulnerable. But there was another key to their success. Karai was the Shredder for a while. This somehow made her being able to connect to and drain the life force of the Tengu Shredder. She eventually helped the Turtles defeat the Shredder Dragon, and by doing so, forced him to gather all the energy that was transforming Manhattan, returning the city to normal. The Turtles, in their dragon form, invoked the spirit of Hamato Yoshi, who finally put an end to the menace. After this, it was implied that Karai and Chaplin left the Foot Clan and probably lived happily ever after, and in peace with the Turtles. Hey, this story is not over yet! Karai wasn't the Shredder anymore, but it seemed like she still had some following. One day, her monitoring systems detected that her father escaped the ice asteroid. She tracked him to a technodrome under the city, and she rescued her father from the hands of the Shredder and Krang of the 1987 universe. Kar-Ai and Shirelle took over the technodrome from the other villains and upgraded it with Utrom technology. 
It was then that Shirelle found out about the Turtleverse and the many versions of the Turtles, and the most important piece of information, that there would always be more Turtles in the multiverse that could stop him. But they all forked from one particular version, the Prime Turtles. All he had to do was to destroy that version of the Turtles to eliminate all the Turtles from existence. He captured the 1987 and 2003 Turtles and put them in a machine to get the coordinates of the Prime Turtles, destroying the two sets of Turtles in the process. Karai was able to spy on her father and listen to his plans. She realized she had to save the Turtles and transported them away, making her father think he destroyed them. The Turtles then escaped to the Prime Earth, where they met the original Turtles. There, they joined forces with Karai, Shredder and Krang to defeat Shirelle. After realizing that killing the original Turtles would have erased the entire multiverse from existence, Shirelle hesitated for a minute, but then decided to get his revenge. Even if it meant the end of everything, this was finally prevented, accidentally, by Bebop and Rocksteady. It was implied, once more, that Karai was now on the side of the Turtles. Despite not being the original incarnation of this character, it was probably the most influential one. She was immediately connected to the Oracle legacy and all her future incarnations. It's interesting how sometimes adaptations change characters forever. The original Turtles were redefined by the 1987 cartoon and the 2003 Car Eye did the same as well, even inspiring the Mirage writers of that time. I did another video about the three different versions of the 2003 Shredder and briefly mentioned Car Eye in it as one of the Shredders. Car Eye's story was too long and clearly needed her own video. What do you think happened to this character after the events of Turtles Forever? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thanks for watching.